It's uh, it's that time of year, isn't it? You know, Halloween, you need to do a spooky story, a spooky video. It's like, it's YouTube law. Every other channel is doing spooky videos. So, and they're going to do that. I'm going to get in early. That's what I thought, a few days early, because by the time it gets to actually Halloween, you'll be sick to death of it. But I'll have got mine over and done with them. Anyway, let me tell you about this video. Don't worry, Helen's going to be in it. I'm going to pick her up in a minute. I'm just on my way to pick her up shortly. So, a couple of months ago, we were in a Greek restaurant, me and Helen, and we were just chatting and I filmed it and everything. And I was talking about uh, my strange family and the ghostly experiences in my family. And there's a lot of things that have gone on. And uh, and that was it. I just mentioned it. And then there were loads of comments. People said, we need to hear these stories. So I thought, well, I'll make a video. And this is that video. I thought it's perfect to wait to Halloween, isn't it, to do this story. So this video is about my spooky family stories, which are amazing and very scary. So if you've got small children or if you've uh, if you've got a nervous disposition, you may want to go and watch something else because this will terrify you. Probably, I'm just kidding. It's scary though. Anyway, so I thought I need to do this video. And I need to do it in a spooky location because I'm going to have Helen and we're going to do talk spooky talk and we're going to do it. So, but you need to be somewhere spooky. So I did some research. First things first, we've got to have some food, which is like that's priority. So we're going to the Workley Arms and that's apparently haunted. It's not. In fact, there's a ghost. I'm going to put a picture up now. That's the ghost. I mean, mm. Not very convincing. It looks more like Darth Vader or something. So that's the apparent ghost that haunts the pub. But then we're going to go to Stocksbridge Bypass. Now, if you're from Sheffield, obviously you know... Well, if you're from all around Barnsley, Sheffield, whatever, you know about Stocksbridge Bypass. Now, it's known as the most haunted road in the UK. And in the 90s, Michael Aspel made a TV programme about it. Uh, which is worth watching. You need to uh, look it up after you've watched this video. And it's about all the sightings and all the things and weird things that happened. And when you watch it, it is a little bit eerie and scary. And it, I was watching it late at night in back of my van and I was a bit scared. <laughs> and I don't get scared because I don't believe in ghosts. That's the funny thing. I think it's a load of rubbish. But then this is a dilemma because I've got this, like Adam's family here, with all sorts of shenanigans going on. But I'm like, well, they're not lying to me. It's not been a massive family conspiracy that's been going on for years. So there's something there. I just need to, you know, we need to find out what's going on. Right, back to Stocksbridge. I've done a ton of research. I found the exact spot where all the hauntings and all these weird stuff happens. And apparently it's quite sinister and it's quite dark and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to go tonight with Helen after we've had his tea. And I'm going to tell the stories parked up there. And to be honest, I am a little bit scared. But I'm not going to tell Alan that. I want to act all like manly. And uh, I've even got, I've got this fancy new uh, phone with it. It's got infrared, not infrared, night vision. And I might, I'm thinking about even going out at van and walk. There's a bit of a forest area where stuff happened. That's probably not going to happen, to be honest with you. But... It'd be good, wouldn't it? Night vision and everything. That'd really add to the eeriness. So, I'm going to pick Helen up. We're going to take you for some tea first. Show you the Wortley Arms, because it is a lovely meal in Wortley Arms. And then we'll go, and then the spookiness will begin. So hold tight and 
buckle down, make yourself a cup of tea, turn the lights off and all that stuff. Let's go pick Helen up. We've just pulled up at Wortley Arms. Helen's having her hair breakdown, but it looks really nice. It looks lovely, oh, sweetheart. Gosh. I'm going through the curly girl transition period. Yeah. It's terrible. I don't think our They're subscribers really, yeah, are really into especially the bald ones. women's hair care routines. Or <laughs> we've just, so we're, we're here and this table's booked, so we need to get in. And then I've realised that there's a, a graveyard directly across. So I think when we come out, we will take the night vision into the graveyard just to test it because it is supposedly very haunted around here just to build up his confidence your hair is perfect it's, it's beautiful not, it's, it's just really it's terrible. fine hey do you like my new trousers yeah you they're snazzy guess how much go on six english pounds wow That was good timing, so I wonder if we should have. Right, well, this is where we're going, this is the pub. I thought you might have mistaken the last one. Oh my goodness, how old is it? Your hair looks really nice. Is don't, it? Honestly, don't You're worry. Just it, I'll you? let you look back at this. So there's a, there's a few people in. It's nice, nice vibe. We're sat here corner. Put us in naughty corner again. <laughs> Cheers. Do you know what that looks like? Fish and chips bit with a pint out of the fish. Yeah. <laughs> Spin it around like that for you. Oh, you're good, aren't you? So, what have you ordered, Helen? I've, I don't know. I've got you've, chicken. you've forgot. I've got chicken and it's stuffed with liver. And chicken and stuff. Fennel and things. And I have got the pie, which does look very nice. That is really lovely, Helen. Mm. Look at my. So, my pie is like a ham and leek pie. Not something I'd usually go for, but it's very nice. The with whole grain mustard in it. And it's got mustard in it. The chips are gorgeous as well. Ooh, look at this. What's that? It's dopping was like thing with breadcrumbs on it. That's good, isn't it? You've left a bit. <laughs> you were, she was scraping pattern off a plate. There used to be a pattern on that, didn't there? Right, come on, I'm only kidding. What's your thoughts on that meal? Beautiful. It was nice. It was lovely. I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. We, you can't go wrong in here. It's always good. I'm finishing your bits on. <laughs> oh God. It's just like you a think you're I... a scavenger. Um. It was very good. That I really, really enjoyed it. I had the lamb. What did I have? Ham hock. Ham hock. Did and you leek. just say lamb? Yeah. Because you wanted the lamb. Do you know cooked. you? You need to like baby think before you speak. You. <laughs> I said that because Helen wanted the lamb hock, but they just got none. I wanted lamb. the lamb shank. Lamb shank. I had a ham hock and leek pie, and it was gorgeous. The gravy was lovely, and the chips were fantastic as well. I really recommend this place. Lovely. Because when I walked in, I saw a man with the lamb shank and it looked amazing. You were having a lamb shank in corner, weren't you? He was. Is that a full moon, Ellen? It's not full. Is it not full? Oh. But it's out. It's out. Right, it's spooky time now. Do you know what it is? Do you know it's what it is yet? It's not, it's out, not out, out. <laughs> right, we're going, we're going spooky fine now.
so we're in the spot so we just parked on Peroid Bridge which is above Stocksbridge Bypass and this spot where we're parked so in front of us you can't really see it but we'll get out in a bit there's a pylon I'll tell you stories and there's the bridge sort of just here sort of parked just up from the bridge so uh, do you feel scared yet? No. No. No, because I've not read any. You've of not the read stories, score, no. stories. And You've I not read the scories, the scary I stories. I don't wish to. It is a bit dark. So, if you watch the reconstruction on the Michael Aspel thing, <laughs> you'd see where we're parked now, and it's giving me a bit of goosebumps just thinking it? about Can it. Can we lock the doors? Yeah, I think we should. Well, the doors are locked. Are they? Right, so I'll tell you a story. Let's get out and have a look first. I'm going to get out on my own. I'm getting out with Are you. Are you coming? Yeah. You've got your torch. Where's my torch? There. So. Who are these torches I've got? So that's the pylon. Can we see it? I'm going to get the night vision out in a bit so I don't know if you can see on this so that's the pylon so what happened is there were two security guards that were parked here where we are this were in 80s um, and they saw there's been a few sightings of children singing and dancing uh, ring a ring of roses just under that pylon Shall we ever go with this night vision or do you want to go in forest? We'll go in forest, it'll be more To scary. be honest, I don't really want to do it either, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get in, we'll get in van, I'll tell you a story then. You'll be more scared then. Oh, great, thanks for that. So we've not seen any little children. I hope not, it's past the red team. I need to make sure that I'm looking good for the speed. So we've story. just come round corner. There's a like a path here with some eerie happenings. Apparently, we got sort of involuntarily moved on. It was just a bit weird. There were a car pulled up at sideways, and you can't see who was in it. It could have been a faceless monk, but they were sort of indicating. But there were no way for him to go. But they were like, I thought we best move because they could have been murderers. What do you think? I thought that they just wanted to go up that path, but then they turned they around and they went away. Well, why didn't they turn around? Some if they were waiting to turn around. Where does that? Uh, where does that road lead to? Just it, up to it, that farm. They might have been from farm. There's a farm at top. So I've done. But we're not doing anything wrong. We're not doing anything wrong or illegal. But when I read. On all the four, I've done tons of research on Stocksbridge Bypass, and people obviously get all these ghost hunters and everything that come up here and investigate. We've just had a quick look there, not scary at all, is it? But yeah. we're going to make it sound scary for the internet, aren't we? We've got to like, ooh, and all that stuff. But on one of the, uh, somebody else had put that they'd been up doing a sort of whatever it is they do, mm. like an investigation. investigation. And they, they said the only irate, they found an irate farmer, that was the only thing they found. That was the irate it farmer. could be, because, but it, it's got no, you know. But why is he irate? We're not worrying mm. his cattle or his sheep. No, but he might not be. It, it could have just been a quoting couple. Could have been dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have been. We they probably, <laughs> they looked at you and thought, nah, come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah, that were it. <laughs> Anyway, so let me tell you the story about <laughs> Stock Stocksbridge Bypass. It is quite, it's quite a scary story. By the way, what? have you locked the doors? Yeah, doors are locked, don't worry. Because I'm worried about physical people. Well, we're going to get out in a minute and walk up this path. Mm. And we're going to take night vision, love, so get ready. So, let me tell You've you... You've got night vision. I've not got bloody night vision. Can I tell the story? You don't need, you can have a torch, I'll do night vision. You can't do night vision if I've got a torch You on. can. Well, you can have night vision, I'll have a torch. But it's, we can record it, so if we capture anything, it's caught. But nobody ever captures anything, do they? 
The story about Stocksbridge is apparently in, in, in the 1980s they built Stocksbridge Bypass and they built it on some holy ground or something. They disturbed some sort of holy ground. Consecrated ground. Consecrated ground. Like some kind of like Bronze Age burial site or something. Something like that. And there's been numerous sort of stories of people driving under the bridge that we were on and seeing a monk on the bridge. The scary stories are that people, there's been loads of accidents, unfortunately a lot of people killed on that on that road. And there's reports of people driving late at night and then they feel something behind them in the car and they look and there's a monk sat behind them in the car. And that's caused a lot of accidents. People have had accidents and they're on record as saying that that's what they had, that's what they saw. Then there was two security guards when they were building the bypass, they were sort of patrolling in that area where we've just been and they saw children singing uh ring a ring of roses like groups of children in like really like victorian clothes and everything and they were doing ring a ring of roses under that pylon and they didn't sort of click on at first they were like what's all this about kids out at this time it's past their bedtime. it's past their bedtime and then they saw the monk the f this faceless monk figure at the side of the car and they completely freaked out apparently and the there's a church just down here. Uh, I, I took some footage of it earlier, and it, I used to live next door to that church actually, many years ago. And the the first thing they did was went to the uh, church, and they were banging on the door because it completely freaked them out. And there's on the Michael Aspel program what we're talking about. There's interviews with their manager, and he says they were absolutely terrified what they'd seen. Anyway, they called the police. Police were called. And two policemen came to investigate and they they drove round, they parked up, sort of similar area to where we've just been, and they couldn't see anything, and then all of a sudden one of coppers looks to the side and monks there, this faceless monks at the side of his car, and he absolutely breaks it, and then is at that side as well. And other guys and Did he poo in his pants? He pooed in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it freaked them out and then they just because it sort of made them jump and everything they thought it could have been somebody pranking so they jumped out at the car there were nobody around they looked under the car and these are two sort of upstanding policemen and the experience from what i've found out all the stuff i've read they never worked again and one of them's never been right since he's been on medication and been on a bit of a state since that happened and another one now lives in a monastery or something, a religious monastery in Canada. And there's been sort of religious leaders from all different religions and stuff travelled to see him to ask him about what he saw. But if you watch the Michael Aspel thing, there's actually interviews with him uh, talking about what they saw. And, you know, they, they, they were police and they were quite upstanding people. And they just don't look, you get an intuition, don't you? They, they don't look like the sort of people that are going to make it all up. And then there's just countless other stories, just couples driving the cars. Uh, there were a, a, a son and his dad that were jogging uh, and he thought it were his dad and he sort of called out to him because his, his dad were behind him jogging and he called out to him and he turned around this bloke and he had no face. And there's, and there's all interviews with these people that, that, that and they're straight talking Yorkshire folk. They're and not... we're going to go walk in the dark in then bloody woods yeah. there. But there's been no... Are you having a laugh, love? We're going to go, yeah. <laughs> if you if you watched the and the sort of dramatisation of it on the Michael Aspel and then... See, that's scarier. Because it actually shows you a thing. But we're going to go and walk yeah, up there at night vision. because it builds up a story. It does. It, like, builds up the it momentum. Does. But... There's lots of theories. Like, what we're going to do then if we see this bloody monk? What we're going to do? Absolutely, leg it. I'm sure we can, like, bloody glide faster He'll hover. Than we can, well, we're buddy. not going to see a monk. There's a, apparently <coughs> there's an electricity substation around here, and there were pile on just above yeah. us. Because people talk about the cars cutting out and stuff. And there's a lot of people that theorise and said there's lots of copper in the the ground and with the electricity and stuff like that it could be anything but then there's there's nothing there's not been any sightings for quite a long time since 90s or something so they're saying maybe the spirits have the spirits have gone back so anyway get your torch we'll go and have a look i'll get the night vision 
it's nearly a full moon it's about half ten and we're going to go and have a look are you I ready think, yeah i think we're a bit insane like we are a bit insane but we're only going to have a quick look it'll be like yeah we've had a look come on quick <laughs> right just to say we've done it and then we'll go somewhere else I don't know where we're going to go, but then I've got the whole story about my we'll my family. Go somewhere else. I've got my family story to say. Yeah, the main I think story. We should go to another pub. To be fair. Well, I can't have a drink. Well, I can't. <laughs> you think about yourself, love. Let's go. Look, I'm always the dominant driver so, in my house. I got myself this. One of them, you know, these like rugged phones. It's brilliant. Is it do? It's like a Chinese thing. Doogie GT31. And it's got infrared. It's like it's one of them that you can charge your other phones at weird. What does infrared do? It's brilliant infrared, I'll show you. <coughs> Hang on. Let me show you this. I'll have to pause it while I'm But it's got night vision. It's got everything on. <gasps> Let me put my glasses on. It's gonna probably pause you while I do this. Why? Because people don't want to watch this bit, do they? Infrared, right? Are you ready? So I'm gonna show you Helen's infraredness. Oh, you mean like body? And yeah, heat. She, that's what infrared is. Are you ready? Yeah. Hang on. What, what's it doing? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, can you see that? Am I hot? You're a hot. I wonder if I can record it. I think I can record it. Let's have a look. Am I a hot? Am I hot totty? Well, that's a photograph. Oh, I can do video. Hang on. You're hot totty. Hang on. Because no, I'm, I'm covering my stuff up with the jacket. Yeah, but your breasts look bright red. Do they? Yeah, you've got hot breasts. <laughs> Is that the bit that's hot, or is that the bit that's cold? I don't know if this what? is recorded. I think dark means cold, doesn't it? Right, so according to this... Oh, look at that! Yeah, it's like I've got no underwear on. That's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah. So we could use this to hunt for the spirits. <laughs> oh, we've got the night vision. So, yeah, I've got this camera. It's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, the brighter it is, the hotter it is. Yeah, so I'm going to use this. No, do you know what it's? It's thermal imaging. That's what it is. Yeah, therm that. Are you going to use that one? So we've got yeah. we've got all the equipment. You know, like you watch these ghost hunter people. They've got all this fancy stuff. We've no, got a torch not. and that. So let's go and have a look up this path. Right, I'm going to put the night vision on you. Do I need to turn this on? You can do your camera still. Your torch. Alan, just let me try, let's try the infrared, see what sort of, that's quite good, so you can see any heat.
me. There's no trip here, is there? Well, it's warm up there. There's some heat up there. Well, there's some up that way, look. Yeah, come and look at this. Look here. steps Do you want to go up there? Because I don't That, yes, that was a scared face, not a scary face. Not a scary face. Yeah, do a scary face. Yeah. That gear off, you're scaring me. <laughs> so we've concluded from our brief investigation. It was very brief. <laughs> that, the, there's no a, such thing. No, it's a cold <laughs> October night and it was a bit There chill. was nothing there. I weren't even scared. Were you scared walking around? Uh, not scared, but maybe just slightly sort of like apprehensive. I'd have been scared on my own. Would you have been scared on your own? Of course I would, yeah. So that's I didn't want to walk behind, I wanted to walk in front. That's the Stocksbridge investigation and we can prove it all. Yeah, false. but however, it's not that much <laughs> of an investigation. We're on about we walk around with all technology and everything. I'm telling you. Right, anyway. I'm going to tell you my spooky stories about my spooky family. Why don't we go and have a look at the house? Because I don't want to put the house on, oh. not sure where it is. So, my grandma and granddad lived in this house, and it's a big, my uncle lives in the house now. He's been in family for years, and it's a big old Victorian sort of four story house with servants quarters underneath big massive old place and there's so many stories sort of growing up that there's a ghost that haunts the house and she's actually part of the family she's got a name and everything because when i talked i put something on facebook so i was trying to get some some uh, more stories for this video so i asked all my family and they said uh, i said i'm talking about it i'm going to do a thing about the ghost at my grandma's and all like my cousins and that, everybody were like, what, Millie? Because that's what she was called, she's called Millie. And my grandma named her that. And my grandma was a very spiritualist type person. I mean, I've told you all about her, haven't I? Because I'm from sort of uh, Romany blood, uh, a few generations back. And my grandma, she'd like read palms and crystal balls and all that. So, and I used to think it's a right load of rubbish, bless her. But she were into all that. Tarot cards and all that I don't stuff. think she did tarot cards, but she, she'd she got a, a very spiritual side about her. And uh, so there was just so many experiences. All the family have experienced stuff at, at my grandma's house because there was seven children. Uh, my mum was one of seven. And then I've got 13 cousins, so it's quite a big family. And... Loads of family have had experiences and seen stuff 
and I'm probably one of the few who's not even experienced anything. Although I've got a funny story, but it weren't a ghost, but it's connected. Uh, so where do I start so much stories? And this is what I'm saying about sort of ghost stories and things like that, because I don't believe them. But then I'm thinking, are all my family lying? Is my mum? I mean, my mum's not a liar. She, she's not made this story up. But that's the first story is, uh, my mum, uh, she was a twin. Although she was sharing a bed, she wasn't in sharing a bed with her twin though, this one particular night. It was with my, uh, with her other sister, my auntie Hazel. And she was sharing a bed with her. And she woke up, my mum woke up in the middle of the night. Let me turn this off. Because that's probably vibrating. And uh, so she's sharing a bed with my auntie Hazel, is my mum. And she wakes up in the middle of the night and she sees me Auntie Hazel sat at the dressing table in pain, crying, just looking like she's in a lot of pain. And my mum says, Hazel, what's the matter? And just as she said that, she felt her in bed outside her. And this figure, who she thought was Hazel, this woman, just sort of disappeared. I think she floated through the curtains. Don't laugh. I'm not it's laughing. It's true. And the next day, my auntie Hazel had to be rushed into hospital with a appendicitis or something like that. And there's lots of stories. So, so like, we, we talk about my grandma. My gra when you said, dead don't hurt you, it's only living that hurt you. And that's what my grandma used to say, because my grandma used to talk to Millie and she'd say she was a good good a ghost or good spirit. Uh, another story was my auntie Hazel. So bear in mind, they lived in the, my mum grew up in this house and they lived in it for quite a long time. And this one sort of weekend night, my auntie Hazel had uh, been out nightclubbing or something. She was probably in her early twenties or something like that. And she come back to the house early hours, went upstairs, went into the bathroom, and she was sort of uh, posing in front of the mirror, admiring herself. And then she saw. Millie behind her, she was stood behind her, smiling at her. So, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, the other one was when my Uncle Dave had been out boozing and he'd come back, he'd forgot his key one night and he's banging on the door to be let in and my grandma gets out of bed to go and let him in and she goes to the top of, if you imagine a big Victorian house with a big huge staircase type thing, she goes to the top of the stairs and she sees what she thought was my mum or one of the sisters in a dressing gown going downstairs to let him in. So she goes and gets back in bed. Anyway, banging continues. And she gets up and she goes and lets him in. And she says, why, why aren't whoever let you in? And he says, I don't, I don't know what you mean. So it will be slow. The ghost walking down the stairs to let my uncle Dave in. Now my cousin, Rachel, she had loads of experiences and some of them are really surreal. Uh, she, at various times from being a little girl to being sort of teenager, she lived, you know, like you live with your, you go and stay with your grandma and stuff like that. Uh, and there was one occasion when she was a little girl and she said, uh, like my grandma, my grandma says to her, come on, let's have you to bed, let's put you to bed. And she says, oh, will that lady be telling me stories again? And she frequently talked about a lady who would sing to her and she'd tell her stories. And then one evening, she's sort of near bedtime and she come to her mum, because her mum was staying, they were sort of living in the same house. And she said, I need uh, I need some crayons and I need some card because I want to make a, a get well card for me nanan. This was her other nanan, uh, her dad's mum. She says, I need to make a get well card for her. And her mum was like, why? She's not poorly. And she says, well, I want to make her a card. And she died the next day. <laughs> it's, that's a true story, that. So that's a bit so. And then there was just so many other incidental little things. Was she ill? No, she weren't even ill. That's what the thing was. It was a sort of sudden death type thing. But the night before, our Rachel said she was going to make her a get well card. Could be coincidence, so who knows, we're little kids. There's been <clears throat> tons of things with curtains blowing, lights going off, 
dog, they had a, my grandma and granddad had a dog, a big sort of, it was like a crossbreed called Ben, and it'd go absolutely wild and, and growling at things. My granddad didn't believe in a lot of it, but he had experiences. He'd smell tobacco a lot, and there was like shadowy figures that had sort of brushed past you and things like that. Uh, my uncle, since my grandma passed away, my uncle sort of got the house and he's renovated it and he lives in it now with his partner and he sees figure, figures all the time in bedroom and they just talk about it matter of fact there's a figure at bottom at bed and they talk about it and door handles go and stuff there's just too too many things that happen for it just to be and some to, yeah <laughs> it's weird and if you knew my family they're just not like that do you know what i mean but it's like it's just the norm but I've never experienced anything. I can't think of any more stories, really. I'm sure they'll come. Oh, there were a doll. Now, there's something about this doll, and I think there could be more to this, but I don't know if it's connected, because there's an infamous... Now, my grandma's house at the time, in sort of the 60s, was, I think it, even, it were even in newspaper about it, all the hauntings and things that were happening there. And my mum told me that it were in paper, I think, because it, local kids... Whenever they'd walk past my grandma's house, they'd all hold their breath and run past it because it'd freak them out. <laughs> and my mum was living there. This, it, it is a scary house to look at, but like I said, my, my grandma said it's a house of love and she's a loving ghost and stuff like that. There was a doll that kept appearing. Oh, there's so many freaky stories appearing. all coming back to me. There was a doll. Now, my grandma was an antique dealer, that's how I, my dad got into antique dealing and I got into antique dealing, so my grandma started it all and she had a bric-a-brac shop and there was this doll that she fetched home, I think, I don't know, I might be wrong with this, but it kept moving around the house and it kept getting lost and then it's showing a up. scary doll. Scary doll. Those scary dolls. Let me tell you this, so I've tried to research that and when I was researching it, if you go and to Google and stuff and you type in Rotherham haunted doll there's a story that comes up from a woman who bought a doll from a second hand shop in Rotherham I don't know if this is connected and I can't verify it and it kept scratching her husband and she said it's possessed she was even on oh, Good Morning Britain you can see it this woman talking about this doll and then she sold it on eBay because it could be a scam she sold it on eBay for £800, this little doll, and it was sold to a museum of haunted items, you know, where they have all haunted stuff, because apparently there's a lot of stuff happening with this doll. Now, is that the same doll that were at my grandma's house? I don't... It's a bit, was like, it connected. It was, yeah, it was in Rotherham, and my, my grandma had a second-hand shop, so could she have sold that doll? Possibly. There was... Lots of, so if you imagine a big old Victorian house, there were like rooms that would never... I mean, I remember growing up there and I'd, I'd go and stay there, although not, nothing ever happened. Oh, there were a boot. A few, so as you're going upstairs, there's like a sort of... You know, like a spirally staircase and you see the landing. A few people had seen like a boot walking on its own, like a Victorian fancy What, with no boot. one's With nobody in it, no just a boot, and a couple of people saw that. And of course, all this would be very sort of uh, accepted in the family. And as I was growing up, we used to have massive parties at my grandma and granddad's. Uh, and when I was like a teenager, and would t I'd take my friends and everything because it'd become a bit infamous because of the ghost. And we'd be drinking like we'd have a can of beer when we were teenagers and we'd sit in like one of haunted rooms and be saying, come on, show yourself, we want to Did see you. Did you do a Ouija board? We didn't do a Ouija board, but... We Try and talk. We, yeah, we were too scared. We'd try and talk to it. Nothing ever happened. Uh, so, yeah, all those stories. The doll, there was when they got the house. This is a bit weird. Uh, when they bought the house, and this was probably in 50s, I think. I don't know. But there was one corner room which never got used, ever. Even after, like, when I'd been and everything, it were always sort of locked, this secret room, which was a bit what freaky. Was in the secret room? Exactly. But they were going to decorate it and it was it had got a fireplace in corner. So you know all these like Victorian properties, they have fireplaces in bedrooms and stuff like that. And there was a fireplace in like a corner fireplace and it was blocked up and they were getting up and unblocking it and they pulled loads of human hair out. <laughs> That's a 
but somebody just jumped up there. It's a bit. There were nobody. I don't like that. I, th I vaguely seem to remember a story about that Millie, she could have been a girl that worked in the house in Victorian times. She could have been like a a servant of some kind, but she was a kind spirit. And that's the that's the story from my from my family. What do you think? Mm. Do you believe it? I don't know. But that's what everybody wanted to hear. I am open-minded. You know, you can't sit down with my mum and say to her, oh, you, you, you know, you lie. You know I, what I mean? Yeah, however, I believe that they believe that they did see something. <sighs> but everybody, though. Because, you know, you know, at night, it always happens at night when you're half asleep. Yeah. Dreaming and... Um, why does it always happen at night? I don't know if all stories have happened at night. I know they haven't because I know... Are you tired? Well, our Rachel, my cousin, tells Seat a story about there was something <clears throat> uh, when the dog were like... So, Ben, you need to speak to our Rachel. And she's got loads of stories. And curtains blew and there was a strong smell. And then the dog was sort of in her face like really growling but as if it were looking at something above her head and then all of a sudden it started whimpering like protecting her it was just like a bit weird and that were in daytime yeah and things had regularly gone missing and move around and stuff but isn't that everybody possibly everyone loses stuff don't they possibly because you've forgotten where you've put it yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's not true, but there's always a, a, like a, a sort of an explanation for it all. Well, my uncle lives in that house mm. and, you know, I need to sort of... I've tried to ring him, but he's not, he's not being answered. I think I've got an old number. But I need to maybe go he to the house. He doesn't want you to go around. Yeah, he's probably avoiding me. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to set some up and see how he'd feel about us going to house and maybe doing... What, some psychic investigation? Yeah, something like that. But we'd love to hear your ghost stories. Don't do them too scary, because sometimes I read these when I'm, like, laid it back in my van on a night. On like, your own up a door lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you ever get... Your, so you're in back at van, and you're on a lane, it's all quiet, and I'll read your ghost stories, and I'll get all ghost bumps in there. I'll think, oh, sod that. What would you do? I'll put like a carry-on film on or something like that. <laughs> you know, just something to take me To cancel it out. Got to cancel it out, yeah. I'll phone you up. Ring me up. Yeah. Do you know I always have my phone on 24-7 just in do. case, yeah. like... In case I get scared. Yeah. No, just in case you need me. I never, I don't have me message alerts on, but I always have my phone on. When you see it's me, you hang up, don't you? No. I always answer your calls. Right. We'll go in there. Where are we going? What time is it? I've got ideas. It's about 11 or something. Is like it? That. I don't know. Oh, we'll it's nearly bedtime. I know. Well, do you want to go to the pub? Are you sure? I know. Could it at Asda and get Let's something? Let's go to Thasda <laughs> and we'll have a nightcap in my house. Okay. Right. I'll even buy you some chocolate. I'm cutting down on stuff like that. Are you? Oh, some mistakes, oh, okay, then. Right. See y'all. Get subscribing. Yeah. You know it makes sense. See you next video. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything. Civet.